In this section, we're going to continue where we left off with exploring MySQL Query Browser to focus on MyODBC. The MySQL AB group writes the MyODBC driver, and the open source community also has contributed to the driver, which is now available for a wide variety of platforms, including Windows. Let's give you a little history. If we go to Control Panel, for example, Administrative Tools, Data Sources, you'll see that there are data sources or data source types that we can set up. There are drivers, but none of them allow you to talk to a MySQL database. For example, here are drivers for text files, Microsoft Access, DBase, Excel, Paradox, Fox Pro, and so forth. But none of these will allow you to connect to MySQL. And here's even one for SQL Server, but this is Microsoft's SQL Server. When you install a DBMS system on a Windows box that is not from Microsoft, such as Oracle DB2 or even MySQL, you generally need drivers from the vendor or from the open source community to be able to talk to the DBMS. In this case, MySQL is not running on the WinBox, but let's say we have applications on this system that we want to be able to connect to the MySQL instance running on the Linux box. Those applications include Excel as well as Microsoft Access. These are just two examples of applications that can tie into databases via ODBC. Well, again, the MySQL AB group has created MyODBC, and MyODBC can be installed on Windows and be set up as an additional data source. So what we're going to do is download MyODBC, install it, and then we'll be able to create a data source which connects us to the MySQL server running on the Linux box. So in our browser window, which we still have access to, we haven't closed, we'll attempt to take a look at the page where we can download the ODBC driver. Now usually the download is available via the, and we'll just go directly to it since we know the URL, it's usually available via products forward slash myodbc. So let's go to www.mysql.com products myodbc. And if this link doesn't do it, we'll try ODBC. But there's a a direct product link which will allow you to get to the page where you can download my ODBC and it is ODBC, it's redirected to simply ODBC. So let's scroll down and you'll see the two versions of ODBC that are available. The more recent version 3.51 is considered the production version, 2.50 is considered the old production version but for the most part both ODBC drivers are licensed using GPL or GNU public license the general public license. So let's click on the ODBC 351 and you'll see that this driver supports many platforms which means if you want applications on your Nix based system including Mac OS 10 to connect including FreeBSD to, to a MySQL database and the utility or application doesn't provide native drivers then you can use MyODBC. So MyODBC is a cross-platform open specification which allows you to connect in this case to a MySQL server. So we simply want to find the Windows download section. We'll get the MSI package which is 2.3 megs. Let's click on pick a mirror. We'll download it from what we consider to be a fast mirror for our location. We can skip the registration section but if you do want information from MySQL then certainly sign up. Let's click on bizrate and download the MSI package using HTTP. Once it's here we'll save it to disk and once it's done, we'll install it. So again, none of our applications can currently talk to the MySQL server with the exception of native MySQL applications, including the query browser, as well as the administrator. Let's click on Open, and this will launch the MSI package, which brings up a familiar MySQL window. Nice, pretty graphics, and it tells us that it's version 3.51 of MyODBC. Again, it's a generic ODBC driver which runs pretty much on all major platforms and allows pretty much any application to interface to the MySQL server. We tend to click on custom to see what options are available and in this case you'll see that the connector is the primary choice followed by any help which may or may not be useful 
followed by utilities. The help is always useful in the event that you notice that there are discrepancies in the result sets that are returned using MyODBC. So for example, if you stumble into a bug or some sort of problem that causes a discrepancy in your result set, you then would want to consider consulting the ODBC help or perhaps even filing a bug complaint. Let's click on next and the default is to install everything, the full component set. Once we click on finish, we're ready to use the driver. It doesn't require a reboot. So let's go ahead and close Mozilla Firefox and verify that the driver has been installed on the system by navigating to administrative tools, data sources, and it won't reveal itself through the user or system DSN pages, but if you navigate over to drivers, you'll see that a new driver has been installed called MySQL ODBC 351 driver. And the company is MySQL AB, and it's implemented via a DLL, or a dynamic link library, which was last updated in October of 2005. So this is the driver, which means that via user, system, and or file DSN, we can now create data source connections that any application running on the WinBox that is ODBC compliant can make use of, including Microsoft's Access as well as Excel, and even OpenOffice.org's Calc as well as additional programs. So let's go ahead and define a DSN that all users of our system can take advantage of. If you want the DSN to be private, define it as a user DSN. If you already have DSNs defined perhaps on a shared repository, then click on File DSN and go browsing for the File DSN if it's already defined. But in our case we don't, so we'll sim simply click on System DSN and then Add. What comes up is a list of drivers. Now again, this is for those folks the, who have Windows running on their desktop but their data store is MySQL or you're considering converting your data store to MySQL for certain applications. You'll certainly need this access on your desktop if you plan to analyze the data from a Windows perspective. Let's click on MySQL ODBC and what you'll see is a pop-up that's very familiar. It includes the name of the data source. This is a descriptive name. We need to name it because applications will cross-reference the name. Description is optional and it tells you to the right whether or not it's optional. The server is required, but if you don't specify a server, the default is to attempt to connect to the local host. But this local host doesn't have an instance of MySQL running. User, of course, is required, and it tells you the default is to submit an empty user. Password, of course, is required and the database will become apparent once we've specified the aforementioned. So in other words, we need to define the specs first. Notice an error is returned because we haven't defined the other fields. There are connection options such as an alternate port or even a socket. Now it tells you the default is 3306 and a socket doesn't apply to Windows, it would be a named pipe in which case you could avoid connecting using TCP IP and here we can specify an initial statement that should be executed once we've connected. This can be any SQL statement that the user is granted permissions to run. And there are other options, other flags that can be turned on such as whether or not to use compression, to change big int columns to int, safe mode, and so forth. And there are many flags in the groups flag 2 through 3 which can help you to customize the environment, whether or not to disable transactions, that's something you may or not want to consider depending on your environment. Or if you're experiencing problems with the driver, you can trace the calls that are made to a log file and then analyze the log file later on. You may also save all executed queries to a file called myodbc.sql. So every query that's executed through the connector, through this ODBC connector, which is called myodbc version 351 minor revision.12, will be logged into a log file for subsequent review. So let's go ahead and define a data source name. We'll call it Linux CBT DB1 since this data source will provide access to the, the Linux CBT DB1 DBMS. We'll describe it as Linux CBT DB1 DBMS. The server is the same name but we'll fully qualify it by including the full domain part which is Linux CBT.internal or we could specify here the IP address. That's certainly an option. The user, as you know, who's allowed to log in is called Linux CBT. Now, if you recall, we currently have the query browser window logged in, 
and above it says that we're logged in or connected as the user Linux CBT to Linux CBT DB1 Linux CBT internal. So in other words, this user is permitted access across the wire. As you know, MySQL's default permission set grants access from the local system and not from remote systems. So we need to always use a user who's able to connect from across the wire. And if you want to confirm who's able to connect, simply if you have a terminal window open as we do, connect to your instance of MySQL, which we're about to do. And once we break this, we'll just launch a MySQL prompt. Once we're in, we'll execute a select user host password from mysql.user, and you'll see the users who are permitted access remotely, including the user Linux CBT and Replica. These are the two users who can connect from a remote instance. But of course, the user Linux CBT has more rights. If we execute a show grant for Linux CBT, you'll see that this user has all privileges on all databases and all tables without the grant option. But this user's, uh, user has enough privileges to perform most functions, whereas a replica user does not. So let's return to the driver definition, and we'll specify Linux CBT's password in the password field and, field, and this needs to be correct, otherwise it'll fail. And in fact, let's go ahead and specify an incorrect password. Now once you specify the incorrect password and attempt to list the databases, an error is returned. However, when you specify the correct password and then attempt to enumerate the databases, here are the schemas. So we'll select the default schema of HR. That's our default. It is optional. We don't need to specify a default database, but if you tend to operate within a given database or schema, then specify it. Also, like with other drivers that are ODBC compliant, you should test them to ensure that the client's able to connect and what should be returned is what you see here. Success connection was made. Once complete, click on OK and now within the system DSL, DSN we now have a new data source which is accessible to any user of our local system. So we'll click OK and then proceed to linking tables through access. So let's go to all programs We'll find the Microsoft Office Group and launch Office 2003. And once within, we'll create a new database. So let's create a new file. You need to have a new database defined before you can link them. We'll go with the default name of DB1. And this will set up a blank sheet in which we can operate. We'll just cancel the pop-up regarding registration. And once in here, we have the ability to link tables. We can import data, link tables, and so forth. Simply navigate and you'll see where you can get external data when you click on file get external data followed by import and then you navigate to the data sources section to find the data sources that are defined on the local system now in this case the my data sources are personal data sources files that are defined personally for the user which doesn't exist so scroll down where it says where it says below file name files of type and search for ODBC databases and what pops up is a window which allows you to link to data sources that are defined on the local system. Now, what we're referencing isn't considered to be a file data source because we didn't define it as a file that's shared out on the file system. We defined it as a machine data source, and here it is, Linux CBT DB1. We could optionally click on New to define a new data source at this point when we attempt to get external data. So let's click OK, and what pops up are a list of tables from the default database. As you know, our default database is HR. So rather than asking us or prompting us to specify a database, the driver knows that we're defaulting to the HRDB and presents us with a list of tables within the HRDB, which means if you want to provide system-wide access to other DBs, you could go ahead and define in control panel or in administrative tools additional data sources that default to different DBs. So for example, in system DSN, this DSN could be renamed to be called Linux CBT DB1 HR. And you could subsequently define other data sources and so on. So let's go ahead and pick employees. We'll click OK. And this will become a linked table. So now within Microsoft Access, as easy as that, if we click on employees by double clicking, here are the results of values that are stored on the server. Now of course, you'll need full permissions to be able to manipulate the data which we have so if we wanted to we could remove a row get rid of an employee kill the result set and it says yes you're about to delete so we need to confirm it what's being executed 
is a SQL statement via the MyODBC351 driver, which sends the statement to the MySQL server. So now on the MySQL server, let's use HR, followed by select star from employees, and we expect to find six employees. We found six employees. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's set up. Employees, these are the list of employees, but this is a linked table. We can go ahead and link additional tables. We can run queries on this table. We can look at the design view to see how the fields are defined. Again, Access interprets the different data types to be its supported data types, some of which are overlaps. But text is generic, which will cover var car and car, and most of the string types. And date time covers the date time field. So now we have one linked table, and we can operate with this table, run queries on it, export it, and so forth from within Microsoft Access. Again, we can get additional external data, or we could simply link tables. If we had a table locally, we could link it or link it new. Let's go down to ODBC, for example, and select a machine data source, Linux CBT DB1. This time, let's pick the PayScale table and click OK, and there's a link to the remote system. We click on it. Here are the PayScale items. This is linked. The other one is actually a copy of the data. So employee is a copy. PayScale is a link indicated by the globe icon. Let's go ahead and delete this particular table. We'll delete it. And you'll notice that by virtue of deletion, it doesn't get deleted from the server. It's still on the server. Let's go ahead and create a new link table using a, an ODBC data source name. Let's find it, ODBC data sources, machine data source, Linux CBT DB1, and we'll pick employees yet again. But this time it'll be linked with a globe icon versus being linked using a table icon. So now when we double click on employees, you still see that record. Let's go ahead and wipe that record again. We'll click on yes, close to save the changes, re double click, and notice that you see the set of users minus the user who we just deleted. Now on the server side, let's select star and notice that finally that user has been deleted. So what this illustrates is that there's a slight difference between linking a table and copying a table. And that difference, one, is manifested via the icon that's presented, and two, by the fact that one is really just a link to what's happening on the server versus the other is actually a copy of the data set. So when you actually import data, you create a table structure which mimics the table structure on the server. When you link the table, you actually make a link to the real server. And any changes you make to that link, in this case, employees we wipe the user, affects the server. Let's delete this record again, or another record that is. And now there are only four employees defined. Now let's look from the vantage point of the MySQL terminal monitor at the data set, and you'll see that there are only four employees defined. Additionally, if we were to look at the data set from the query browser, by selecting the same list or rerunning the query, you'll see momentarily that the other employees have been deleted, and there are only four employees left. So we have multiple connections to the same backend database server, one via a native MySQL query browser program, another via Microsoft's Access via linked tables, and another via a shell MySQL terminal monitor program. So we have three connections in, into the database, which allows us to manipulate the database. And again, we just want to show you how quick and easy it is to set up using MyODBC, a connection from Microsoft's Access into MySQL.